The main thing we want to talk about today is the fact that the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie has officially came out. We kind of wanted to, I kind of wanted to tackle it in three different um, three different departments, and we can stay on each topic for as little or as long as you want. We don't need to really kind of focus on it for any longer than it has to be. But I wanted to look at the advertisement that the movie had coming out. I wanted to look at the financial standings that it's been doing in its opening weekend and its run right now. And then I wanted to kind of talk about at the end our overall impressions and rating of the game. Oh. Or of the game, of the of the movie. So, um, And we're going to do our best to not do any spoilers. And when it comes to the part where we talk about our impressions of the movie, I'll kind of remind it, you know, throw up the flag again if you guys don't want anything spoiled for you or what maybe what you consider a spoiler. But how's that sound? We can kind of tackle those three things and just give our overall impressions of it. Yeah, but before we start with the movie, because I have something small that I kind of want to talk you, about. You, my man. Hey, it's your whatever. show, baby. Do whatever so you want. So before you get to that, go ahead and throw it to me. The main thing I wanted to get into was... The poster, the poster that they Loved did it. with that throwback, um, with the big fat number two Sonic and Tails in front of it, Doctor Robotnik behind it, was like a perfect homage to the old school Sega Genesis uh, or the original Mega Drive Sonic the Hedgehog two um, artwork for the box. When you saw that, what did you think? Especially that they even caught, they even got like the checkered, um, the checkeredness, you know, in like the side of the two. As, I thought that was one of the best posters I've ever seen. As soon as I seen it too, yeah, I instantly thought the same thing. I was like, damn, that's like really cool. That's a poster I would hang on my wall. I wish, yeah, actually, you know what? I don't, I haven't hung up a poster in my wall that's based on a movie in years. But if we could find a good copy of that, actually, that'd be kind of cool to like put up in the game room. Uh, yeah, when I saw that, I was like, okay, cool. Hopefully, and it, to a degree, it does. When the movie comes out, it keeps that fundamental, like, all right, you know, this shows you have some understanding of the game. You're aware of the game. You're not just making whatever. It's like a cash grab. Obviously, you went out of your way to make this, and this is so dope that hopefully that translates into the movie, too, that you understand what Sonic and Pals is. Yeah, and I, I, I just super appreciate it because obviously they Sega took a big page on Paramount for making, from listening to the fans. I mean, obviously, when they redid Sonic's look, from the first one, that's them listening to the fans. Them throwing this poster out there was literally just like, hey, fans, this one's for you. So I love the, sure. I love the callback. And the second thing I want to talk about the advertisement, which we'd have to discuss, is uh, the trailers. I thought the trailers were great. Um, I love the, the um, look of Robotnik that they're kind of showing throughout the trailers. I love that when you finally get to see um, Knuckles and in the trailer when he's like, Sonic's like, well, you can't steal my power. And and then Knuckles is just like, what makes you think I need your power? Yeah. I was like, god damn, Knuckles. So, I don't know. The, the way they were able to just kind of... Because I think there's three trailers that they did. I, I instantly was just like, dude, this is the Sonic movie that I've been waiting for. So, what were your thoughts of the trailers throughout? No, same thing. It totally caught me. They showed off the most interesting parts. And again, we'll kind of get into like what is and is not great about this movie. But they totally captured the spirit in the trailers. And again, to a degree, they capture that in the movie, obviously, because it's there. It's just some of the other things I think take away from it that obviously I understand why it's not in the trailer. But it's like, no, what they showed off in the trailers, I'm like, dude, this looks great. Like, this looks super dope. This looks like the Sonic like movie that I'm wanting. As much as I like the first one, you know, this I thought looked better. Yeah, because I was watching a movie with my dad in theaters and the Sonic 2 trailer was playing. And he's like, oh, they're making a Sonic movie? I'm like, dude, this is number two, man. Like, you gotta, you gotta watch number one so you can get, you can get ready to watch number two. So yeah, uh, then me and him went and saw it the other day, and uh, we'll have our thoughts here in a second. But um, that was it for advertisement. Unless there's anything else you want to add? No. Okay, so I want to get into the financial standings that these movies actually. Um, going through here, and I had myself a little something pulled up. Here. I heard so, it did pretty well, which is good, or at least well enough. Uh, yeah, it had a really good opening uh, weekend. Not that it was really going against anything that was going to knock it out of the box. It's going against Fantastic Beast number three, which isn't doing that great. But um, this actually has set, um, I think, two records so far for opening weekend. So let me read this real quick for you guys. And this comes... <clears throat> let me get these burps out of the way. From Variety. And this goes... Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 powered to 71 million in its domestic box office debut, a hopeful indication that family audiences are feeling better about returning to the movie theaters. In taking the number one spot, Paramount's kid-friendly film towered over Sony's Marvel adaptation Morbius and Universal's Michael Bay action-adventure Ambulance, which debuted in fourth place with a disappointing 8.7 million. Ew. That hurts, man. 
Uh, that movie actually looked kind of interesting, too. I, I, I wanted to see it. Ticket sales for Sonic the Hedgehog 2 set a new high watermark for video game adaptations, supplanting the opening weekend record established by its predecessor, 2020 Sonic the Hedgehog. The first movie collected $58 million in its first three, day, three days of release and ended the President's Day holiday weekend with a mighty $70 million. So it's it definitely has a very strong opening. So what I wanted to point out is actually what it was able to do in the box office. And there's a really cool site you guys can check out. It's called thenumbers.com. You can essentially type in a movie and it'll show you its ranking on where it stands in certain categories. So what Sonic 2 actually was number one in was the top based on the let's see, top based on game weekend domestic. It took the number one spot at 72.1 million and it was number one for top based on game domestic at 26.8 million. So those were the two um, records that was actually able to hold. The other thing I wanted to kind of point out is what it's doing worldwide. So I was actually, let me refresh this right now and see if it updates. So as of today, domestically, it's at, let me, well, let me start with, let me back up for a second. The budget for this movie, uh, and it came out on April 8th, was $110 million. The domestic that it's already made is $145 million. The international international that it's made is $142 million, making its worldwide debut at $287.8 million dollars so they've got to be happy i mean there's they're making more of these movies this thing is already clearing its um budget in the, you know as its runtime it's only been out for 16 days so andrew is there even a, a doubt in your mind that we're going to see more sonic movies i know they've talked about expanding the sonic world and on the last episode we talked about jim carrey may or may not be returning to film but there's no doubt that they're not making at least a three or a sonic something yeah no they're for sure doing it, especially with the way they like kind of hint at the ending too but variety if you want to hire me i could be your man on the streets because i can tell you that there are families returning to the theaters because they were talking the whole fucking time and i wanted to get up and punch all these little kids <laughs> in the head because it wasn't just as bad that they were talking but then the parents were talking to each other too while they're like on their phones and like just being super loud oh. i'm like Oh my god, dude. I have not had a bad movie experience in a while until I went and seen this. And I was like, dude, nobody in that theater would shut the hell up. I, yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a, it's like a double edged sword. I like a packed crowd if nobody fucking talks. I don't mind crunching popcorn. I don't mind people shifting in their seats. I don't or mind hearing the electric the candy or yeah, anything. I don't like mind that. hearing the electric motor of your, of your recliner going down. Oh, that's down. fine. But if, when kids start. Anyone, like, when anyone starts talking, or, it bugs me. So when we, when me and my dad got to go watch it, um, the, it was a long ass line, and I was like, God damn it, this is gonna be like uh, Uncharted, and it's gonna be sold out. And I'm like, and it was a lot of senior citizens because we're hitting that 125 special. <laughs> so I'm like, who the fuck is here watching Sonic the Hedgehog? The movie's 125. No, no, the time. Oh, 125 in the afternoon. So when we get to it, I didn't, and I start hearing these guys are all talking about Father Stu. Which is uh, the Mark Wahlberg movie. Yeah. So everybody, everyone in that line was... So when I go in there, there's only about maybe 10 people. So I was like, okay, thank God. So I didn't have any obnoxious people <coughs> in there. But how packed was your crowd? And where did you no, go? Because I went to the Riverside. You go to the lobby? I went to the lobby and there was about maybe like 15 people in there counting us. Oh, so you have a noise with that small of a crowd? Yeah, because they're just talking the whole time, oh, dude. Oh, I, and I, really fun. I hated it. That's unfortunate because, yeah, that is one thing I just cannot stand. So, Dude, the girl <laughs> literally behind me. So here's here's me sitting here. Here's my chair. She put her bare ass feet over the fucking chair that I could see him out of my you peripheral vision. those feet. I was ready to just like start tickling him or something. Do you remember? And I think it's Rocco's Modern Life because instead of being like the headless horseman, it was like the guy that lost his foot and the guy that chases Rocco was like he's just a he's just a foot. Oh and, yeah, and doesn't he have like a face, face on, on the bottom? Yeah. And at the end, they're all taking a picture and they're like, they're, it's like if we're all in it, then who's taking the picture? Yeah, I remember that, dude. That reminds me of that. But um, I do want to point out, guys, because this is kind of on the rise. So there's another website. Um, actually, no, it's the same one. The numbers.com. And what I pulled up was a list of all the video game movies and what it's and what's in the um, the running. So Sonic the Hedgehog 2 right now is in the. Let me see. So right now it's at 287. So at the the thing that's probably popping up because I'm watching the YouTube shows Sonic in 15th place. After the refreshing the box office at its 2.8, it would be in the 11th spot, edging out Tomb Raider at the moment and just under Resident Evil Afterlife, if you guys can see that, which makes it almost right behind Sonic the Hedgehog 1. So there, I mean, this new movie franchise that they have has two movie in the video game. I can't believe like, Rampage is that high. Rampage is up there. Well, I mean, it's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. What are you going to do against Mr. Hollywood? But this new franchise for being 
on a on an IP that's fairly old. You'd have to be you know our age to be remembering the Sega Genesis. So you the, know what my nephew loves Sonic for does some he, reason. Yeah, but how was he introduced to it? Playing a game or watching the movie? Maybe from a game. For who you? I I don't know. I just know that he loves Sonic, and I took him to go see the first one. Excellent. Well, yes, you got to pass it down through a through a family values, but. If this thing is able to keep going, because it's at 280-something, there's no doubt in my mind that it's going to pass the original Sonic at 304. For sure. So once it does, I mean, there's not that much more to pass it that would get it into, like, the top seven or eight. So it's safe to say that Sonic the Hedgehog is going to be one of the best video game franchises and the most successful. But, um, I mean, is that surprising to you at all? Do you find this this kind of odd, or did you think no, Sonic is moving I, in such a great trajectory that this was almost inevitable? I think that it was going to do well, but I definitely, uh, unless it's like a shit show, can see that Super Mario movie they've been talking about trouncing this though once that comes out. But that's just that's just big name title though. I mean, Sonic. I think a lot of people had doubt. No, and that's, then, and that's why it's Sonic well, the underdog. So many people already know Mario. I mean, it's gonna get that. It's gonna get that traffic. Regardless. No, they're they're doing great. I hope they pass the shitty Resident Evil movies. Well, well dude, that's and I like you brought that up because that's the thing that I'm most curious about. Resident Evil Afterlife is number ten, and Resident Evil set uh, the final chapter is number seven. So, te- so technically speaking, Resident Evil so far is the best video game franchise of all time. High having two movies in the top fifteen. Yeah, no, I think if you like, actually the top to- fifteen, Resident Evil Retribution still makes that cut too. Yeah, I would say they those movies did extremely well because they're for like that popcorn like flick crowd. Like I hate those movies. I I like the first two and that's it. <laughs> so I mean, um, Sonic the Hedgehog is is moving in a six in a financial successful way. This movie is making them money. So yeah, there's no reason why they shouldn't be making um, any more of these. But the other thing I kind of wanted to point out while we're still on the financial topic is that uh, Jim Carrey. This is pretty good for him as well. Um, he actually, this is, Sonic 2 makes this his highest um, box office weekend really? opening of all time. So if you guys are watching the YouTube, you guys can see this. But if you guys are listening to the audio, Sonic 2 is his number <coughs> one at the seven at the 72.1 mil. Number two is Bruce Almighty for 67.9 mil. Number three is Sonic 1 at 58 mil. The Grinch at number four for 55 mil. And Batman Forever. So I don't know how that's still on the list. I figured the Grinch would have been number one. 52.7 mil. So um, even if this is Jim Carrey's last hoorah at being a you know movie star. I hope not. Then I like that his last movie has been his most successful movie. Yeah, no, I think that that's really cool and really good. And if him. you're looking at it, Sonic 1 is in his, in that top five. So this, this franchise for him has probably been nothing but obviously... Uh, beneficial financially but like every interview I've seen with them is like a lot of fun him being able to like bring a new essence and life force into Dr. Robotnik I'm gonna say spoiler alert you know he's the best part of both these movies nice is there anything else you want to tackle for the finances or did you think we hit them all no I thought that was good all right so now let's move into the um kind of opinion about the movie so again I will say it to you guys again if up till now you've made it and that's no, no spoilers we might say something that you may consider a spoiler. So, uh, hands up now. It, it, there's going to be timestamps. If you want to just jump to uh, riffs here in a second, then you can jump to that, and that's when we'll stop the conversation. So, moving well, forward. Oh, I was oh like, yeah, no, yes, yeah, I'm I'm saying, before that, pass it over to you. Thank you. Before <laughs> that, I don't remember seeing it in the first one, but the new Sega logo, the way they show off their properties and stuff, is super dope, and I really like when things do that because it gives you a sense of, like, like how like Marvel does it, Marvel yeah, yeah. super successful. I actually like this DC better than has it. Marvel yeah. and DC. I like. I think <laughs> actually, yeah, this one has been the best one, and maybe it's because it's more gamer related. Yeah, but especially hearing that like say, yeah, I do. And then the pixels kind of go out, and it forms the big overall Sega. Yeah, that was dope. So that was just my quick little note that Excellent. I wanted no, that to was get actually before the movie. Fun to talk about. So um, let's move into the actual movie and um, our thoughts on it. So again, no spoilers if we can help it, but. Um, I was going to look at this movie, uh, tackling either going through the movie or just kind of doing a pros and cons. I think we'll just do the pros and con kind of view. Um, do you want to go first or do you want to go second or do you want me to list off mine and then fill in if there's anything missing? 
let's do that, but let's start with the cons first. Because I feel like I like this movie more than I didn't like it, but okay. the cons are kind of strong. But I don't want to discourage anyone from seeing it, because I think you should go out there and make your own opinion. That I thought it was worth it, and I did enjoy it, so I'd rather start with the cons and end on a good note. Okay, so let me start by saying that the movie is already a little bit longer than the first one. This movie clocks in at two hours and two minutes versus the original one at an hour and 39. And... I think the hour and 39 is, I mean, again, it doesn't, time doesn't necessarily mean a movie is going to be better or worse, but for a movie like this, a family movie that's made for kids, I like the hour 39 timestamp for the first one versus the second one because there are parts, this movie is longer, and in a second we'll talk, what we, I think there's easily things you could have cut For out of this. sure. So, um, if you were going to do two hours of the good stuff, like there, cause there is really good stuff in this movie, especially like the ending and the finale, if you, if if there was more of that for the two hours, I'd be all in. But I know exactly what you're talking about for the 30 minutes that you can cut. So I do want to say before we get into our pros and cons is that overall the movie's okay. I'll say that. Um, go see it. It's fun to watch. And if you go see it, if you've got kids to go with or nieces or nephews or a family, it's a family film first and foremost. For because, sure. Um, every, there's parts where... I thought some of the comedy was lacking. All the kids in the theater were dying laughing. So um, definitely go see the see that with them. So uh, moving into the con, my first one, and I think me and you instantly agreed about this, was every human but Doctor Robotnik, maybe Stone, and uh, maybe uh, maybe Tom, are absolutely useless except for the Russian people. I unfunny that. and unnecessary. They're everything that they do. That the I forget the name of the dumb cop who tries to kick into. The, oh, I have, oh I have, it's like Wade. I have them all pulled over here. Yeah, it, Wade. it's Wade. Um, I thought they're all just absolutely useless, and I thought none of that. It took. It takes me out of because <coughs> when you meet Jim Carrey in this movie, right? It picks off right where it left off. He's in he's in the the mushroom world and I'm like cool we're going right into the and then you meet Knuckles pretty early on and I'm like dude let's just stick with this flow we get you know we meet Sonic and and Tom and Maddie are going off I'm like okay cool let's get them out of the way let's focus this movie on Sonic Tails Knuckles Robotnik that's what I thought it was and gonna it, be and it slowed it slows this movie down as soon as every other interaction with humans becomes a 10 minute scene that I have to watch and that was my number one thing it was just like I don't want to see this I don't give a shit about any of these guys yeah Agree? That, <laughs> yeah that was my big thing too I was like okay cool we're getting these guys out of the way hopefully it's gonna be like a, a Sonic Sonic Tails adventure whatever's gonna happen then they're going to come back to the house and, oh, what were you up to? Oh, nothing. Here, by the way, this is my new friend, Tails. We haven't been doing yeah. much or whatever. You know, something like that because Sonic is kind of proposed as a child because he's not fully grown yet. The only part that I thought was fine with the humans was with, like, the Russian people in that cabin just because I actually thought that that oh, was pretty dude, funny. Oh, that, that scene was I died. That, that was yeah. the only good part. The rest of anything else that involves, like, the human interaction and yeah. stuff like that, I'm like, dude, this is not good. Like, I, I don't care for it. It's slowing it down. It's completely just unnecessary to anything else in the plot. Like, you totally could have skipped over this and just, I, I don't know, found another way to get from C to yeah, D. Yeah, because what they do, and it shows you in the trailer, that there is a wedding. And that's essentially why that's essentially why uh, Tom and Maddie are off. They, they have to go to this wedding for her sister, who was, in my mind, kind of an annoying character in number one. Which I feel like they kind of shoehorned them back into right. this movie just to bring back these old characters in this new bit. And in my mind, it was just not funny. It was lackluster. It was you're introducing me to now new characters because it shows her, you know, her the husband that she's getting married to, who's Shamar Moore, who I love. He's a fantastic yeah, actor. He does, yeah, he's he cool. does Cyborg and all the new. Um, he's the voice of Cyborg and all the new DC stuff, but. It, it kind of makes you want to like like these characters who are again are like Anderson you don't need them if you're if the point of the wedding part is to get Sonic from A to B you could have done it a thousand different ways so there's this whole volleyball scene in this movie that once you guys watch this if you want to save this movie 10 minutes you know five minutes cut this scene out like this was completely unnecessary so I thought not only did the human interactions with the movie make it slower but it made it um, just annoying to me. I was like, this is unnecessary. When I slouched in my chair for that. those Dude, I parts. I think my dad fell asleep during that part. So, uh, But you might find that completely different. Again, this is our opinion, so don't take it. Don't get mad. There were kids we're like saying. laughing to it. That's what I'm saying. Every kid was laughing during the wedding scene. So I'm in the minority, I guess. But I thought, I'm like, dude, if you want to shave off 20 minutes, re redo this part. So right. anything else you want to add about the wedding? 
No. Okay. Um, the other part, and maybe we might disagree on this, is I think Sonic... Sonic, I love Ben Schwartz, but Sonic's voice can be annoying. And things he can say can be annoying, but that's part of his charm at the same time. He, right. His character is meant to be aggravating. I, I, However, I thought in this movie... He's much more annoying than he was in number one. Not with his voice, but like what he was saying and how he was reacting to things. Like in the very beginning, when he's dismantling the robbery, this is a drill. I'm like, are we doing like cheesy one bit lines? So I don't know. I, my I I dislike Sonic a little more in this movie at certain times than I ever did in number one. Agree or disagree? I thought it was fine to me. I took it more as like it seemed like they're maybe trying to more make him. Not as violent, but like a kid's like Deadpool. But he with, should be. But he should. But with he should, his commentary but and six, his cheesy jokes and months, stuff like that. He should be six months. Oh no! How long? Doctor Robotnik's been in the mushroom thing for almost a year. It's like yeah. two hundred something days. So at any point, Sonic should have matured, and I almost seemed like he went backwards. It was almost like he became more of a kid. I'm like, well, now you've had a year of being a kid with Tom and Maddie. You seem less mature than you were when you got there. And that's to me, I was finding like this that doesn't make, that doesn't com- hey does not compute with me. Uh, I thought it was fine. I I didn't really have a problem with it. I but I can understand that though too. Like I could definitely. So outside of the second act being completely, um, oh, you could have rewritten that thing. Um, those are pretty much my biggest cons. Was there anything else you wanted to add? No, I will say though that that uh, again is a, a testament to like that part that that had added on so much to the movie that I when it got to. I didn't even think that that, and we'll get to the, that finale part was going to happen. Dude. I thought the movie was going to end when, like, you know, people, like, make up and whatever. And we're going to start three with Robotnik as being, like, the victor from the first movie. But now it we got to stop him and whatever. That's how much time that unnecessary stuff added that I was like, oh, my God, there's no way this movie's going to keep going Yeah, they're going drawing on. this out. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, this two hours is getting close. So, um, but let's get into the pros for a little bit. Um, I think this game definitely felt like a video game movie. And... I consider that a pro. Like, there's some video game movies you can watch, and you're like, oh, this is a video game name. This is a video game movie by name and name alone. This felt like, oh, I'm. There were so many, like, little Easter eggs. Like, when his phone goes off, do, 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 do. Yeah. I was like, excellent. I love that. That was the best part of the the trailer. In the trailer, you're going to see the Robotnik bot. It looks like. Eggman from the games, you know. I mean, you've seen that before, so I'm like, dude, this is ensconced in in video game stuff. So I I thought it was easily uh, very video gaming. I think the best part about video gaming, and I don't know if you've played it, but I think it was I think it's called like Sonic Adventure, the one for the GameCube, and it starts with you like running down the hill, and there's like a truck chasing you and stuff. I don't think I played it. Hey, once you went to Nintendo, I kind of stopped playing. Well, in, in that game, you do play as like Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails, and I felt like this movie did a perfect job of showing off each person's specialties that made it feel like this is what makes them special in the game. You know, like Tails flies, he does his thing, he's got his gadgets, he's got his plane, Sonic's fast and he uses that to his advantage. Knuckles is quick, but his thing is more from like his strength and his power, and that's what he's for. And even when he starts doing the like, Pounding his knuckles yeah. into the thing to like yes, climb up dude, the side of the mountain. Yeah, when he slides on that, it. That's like directly from the game that like you have to fly around and you go through certain parts. And I'm like, dude, that's cool as hell. Like seeing this stuff is super dope. And then even more making that into the relationship. Like Sonic is afraid of water. And then even when he does go underwater at one point, there's like an air bubble that comes up and he takes oh, and he it, slurps it and he slurps it to give himself like more air. I'm like, they took so many things from the games that if they had, uh, again, cut out the human stuff and added a little bit more of that it would that would have been perfect like yeah. i loved all that stuff that they added it shows that they really did have a fundamental understanding of like you know this is a video game movie this is based off a video game we're not just taking a property and doing whatever with the name of it no this is a movie that's based off of an existing whatever let's take a bunch of stuff from it and not see what sticks but make it work no i'm with you i 100 agree they, i wish they would have done more like the snowboarding thing that ev- as soon as he did that everyone know but he's gonna slide down this mountain just like we know sonic does so i yeah i wish they would have done more with that but i'm glad we got what we <coughs> what we saw the um the second part is, that i think was one of a big pro was outside of the stuff we didn't like in the story that i thought could have been skippable I like the story. I like yes. the way that the way Tails came in. I like that you get to find out what Knuckles' background is. I like how you discover a how Robotnik gets out and b what his sinister plan is. I like that you get to know more 
about I forget the owl's name. Um, um Longclaw. Longclaw. Yeah. Uh, it you, is Longclaw. You, it is okay. You get to know more about why Sonic is who he is and what he has to do as um, the pupil of Longclaw. I like that you get to when you watch the third act of this movie. You guys are gonna know exactly what I'm saying. But I like the way the story progressed it, and I was like, dude, this is this is really cool. This is a cool Sonic the Hedgehog story. I completely agree. Like, without the other stuff that, again, we said we didn't like, the story itself from, like, front to back was great. It made sense. I I loved it. I thought it was absolutely cool, especially, again, you're right, seeing more of, like, why Sonic is alone by himself, why there is only one owl, explaining, like, Knuckles and where he comes from. And I love that it even has, uh, and again, light spoilers, you know, flashbacks of young Knuckles, too, and how he came to be. You get origin stories for, like, all these people. Yeah, and the final thing, again, without spoiling anything, is the ending. The ending to me is, it, it's a 10 compared to the rest of the movie. Which, yes. Which, 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 if this is a 10, and the <coughs> first two acts are, like, here, it brings it, it you know, it, unfortunately, it brings the overall score down. But that ending was one of the best endings I've seen for a movie like that in a long time. Hands down. And I didn't even think that they were going to go with some of the choices they make, like especially what they do with Sonic. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, they're really putting all kinds of like really cool stuff in here that that was dope to see on screen. And I'm just, I, I loved what they were doing. And again, that ending made it feel like a video game. Yeah, I, I was absolutely in love with it. So um, those are my three pros and my three cons. Is there anything else you want to add on top of that? The two things that I do want to kind of add, or actually three things that I do want to add on to it, is one, Jim Carrey is amazing in this. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. I know. I, I, I'd argue that he almost steals the show. Yeah, I kind of want to say it again. Like, he steals the show. Every part that he's in is just hilarious. He's so funny. And ah, there, there's just not enough I can gush about him. But two, I it, I loved Idris Elba as Knuckles, but I loved Tails the most. Tails was my favorite. I like Tails more than Sonic. Played by uh, Colleen O. Shoghanessi. Shoghanessi? I don't know who that is, but I thought <laughs> Sonic was the best. But two, there is a post-credit scene. Or three, there is a post-credit scene. Make sure you stay to watch it. But how they did the credits when they made it like a video game, it looked... They, they, it, do, that, they do that number one, too. Th yeah, but again, just to see them recap, keep doing that... It's like that, a recap yeah, of the movie, right? Yeah, it's like a recap in Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, like Sega graphics where he's just running around, whatever. I'm like, you know what? That's cool. You didn't have to do that. The movie's over. I had a great time. But sitting there watching that extra little bit, I was like, you know what? Uh, I thought I think that's cool, and I th definitely think it's worth mentioning because you don't have to do that. You re yeah, you don't. And um, one of the things I do want to point out, and it's not a pro or a con, and it may, but maybe it's a light spoiler. How, what you find out about Sonic and Knuckles being roughly the same age, I do not understand why Knuckles sounds like he's forty and Sonic <laughs> and Sonic sounds like he's twelve because they're supposed to be like the same age. I'm like, whoa, there's a big age gap, and I don't know where Knuckles comes in because they still sound pubescent and i'm like so you got an eight-year-old a 15 year old and this guy that sounds 40 but they're all supposed to be 20 well it's like how like 16 year olds now look like they're 32 and we still look like we're like <laughs> young 20, boys 28 young, young boys in a man's world so yeah so at the end of the day you know those are some of the pros those are some of the cons for sonic um overall i mean I, we don't give scores on the show we don't give like tens and fives and stuff but I would say watch it. I would say watch it. I would say, we were having this conversation earlier. I think Sonic 2 is the better video game movie, but Sonic 1, I think, is the better movie. If that makes sense to anyone, you know, if you're hearing this. But number 2 just has a lot of drag time, especially during the middle, which that is not where you want to lose people. Right. Because it starts off strong. You know, It gets right into Robotnik and Knuckles. <laughs> too slow at least for me slow me down perfect but then three was was this was the fire ending so that's the perfect like kind of analogy is it's got like that like that mario shaped mountaintop it goes up down right there but then it comes right back up and i i don't want to say it goes down again because it ends on a very strong note which is you know i really like but that middle that middle or even just those few parts that are sparse between i'm just like ah oh, i really don't care about this and i was more excited when i thought that that wasn't really going to be in the movie so do you like number one or two better I still think I like 2 better because I like all the video game elements they put into it. Yeah, it I, seemed I, like they just really loved working on this movie and people who appreciated the game, and I thought that it did show. You can't blame that or the, the other parts on, you know, that's writers putting in whatever it is you have to to, you know, make it that Hollywood movie. But the other people who were like, hey, you know, this is a video game movie, I thought that that showed through and through. Yeah, um, I, I again, I think number one is the better movie, but... Two as a fan, 
I think was awesome, and I and I think you should definitely go. It's worth. I don't know what your movie theater charges, but it's worth the ten bucks to go right. check it out. Just bring your family members with you. So um, leave your thoughts down below, guys. What you think of the movie if you've seen it, and if you've got any questions about it, about it, leave it down below, and we'll answer them on the next episode. So. Yeah.